In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up Docker containers as build agents for Jenkins. You've been writing Jenkins pipelines for a while, but you've been constrained to the tooling that's been available on your agents. What if I told you that it was possible that you no longer had to be constrained by specific versions of specific tools on specific agents, and that you could have full control over the tooling that you're using just by having Docker available on your agents? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Here's where we're starting today. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.2 Attached to that controller, I have an agent with a label of Linux. On that agent, I have installed the Docker runtime. Also today, we have a sample repository. The link for this repository is down in the description. In order to get started using Docker as an agent, we will have to install one extra plugin. Let's go over to our controller, Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, go to Available, and the plugin that we're looking for is the Docker Pipeline plugin. Okay, went too far. There we go, Docker Pipeline. So let's go ahead at the time of recording. The version of this is 1.26. So let's click on the checkbox. Download now and install after restart. You can see here that we have three pending plugins, authentication tokens, Docker Commons, and Docker Pipeline. So let's go ahead and do a restart. And let's log back in. And let's take a look at the Jenkins files that we're going to be running today. First off, our Jenkins file one is fairly simple. We're saying at the top level, agent docker. So we've seen in the past, we'll use something like agent label Linux or agent any. But here we're saying agent docker, and then we're going to use the image node 16 Alpine. And then in the stages part of our pipeline, we're just going to do a node version. By setting this agent at the top level, that means all stages will use this agent, specifically a container based on the Node 16 Alpine image. So let's go and set up a job. We're going to say new item, and we're going to call this Docker. Click on pipeline, click OK. Pipeline script from SCM. Change SCM to that, change our branch to main, and finally Jenkins file dash one. Click on save and let's run this. So we click on build now. And as we take a look at one, let's watch what happens. It clones the repository. And then it sees that, oh, there is no such object as a Node 16 Alpine image. So it does a Docker pull. And then at that point, it does a Docker run to start the container. And then within that container, we do a Node version. And then at the end, it stops the container and also removes the container. So if we were to go ahead and SSH into our agent, what we would see if we ran Docker PS is that there are no running containers and there are also no containers left behind. Next up, let's go and look at another example. So let's go take a look at Jenkins file two. And with Jenkins file two, we can see our global level is set at agent none. So we have no agents defined at a global level. So what that means is then at each stage, we have defined different container definitions. In this case, for the back end, we're defining a Maven image. And then for our front end, we're defining a node image. Now, let's watch what happens here. Because I have a single static agent with Docker on it, when we run this job, we would expect that Maven 381 is going to be pulled from Docker Hub because it will be the first time we're running that. But when we get to the second stage, the front end stage, we should not see a pull for node 16, but in fact, what should happen is a container based on node 16 should be spun up off of the image that already exists on that agent. So let's see what happens. Let's go back over to our job, configure, change our dash one to a dash two, click on save and click on build now. 
So taking a look at two, Docker inspect of Maven 381, no subject object. We do a Docker pull, we can see the images coming in. Once the image completes pulling in, then we will run a Maven version. Scroll back up here, we can see that Maven version is 381. But let's go ahead and go back down to our second stage, which was the node stage. We can see here that Docker inspect for node 16, there isn't anything running there at that point, which is okay because it does find that the image exists. So then it spins up the container and does a node version check there as well, and then does its final cleanup of stop and remove. So far, we've seen two examples, one to where we define our agent at the global level. Secondly, we see that we've defined our agents at each stage level. Now, that's nothing specific to using Docker as your agents. You can do that with static agents, no big deal. But for this third pipeline, we're gonna do something that is specific only to Docker. So let's go back and take a look at Jenkins file three. And for Jenkins file three, what we see here is that we're saying agent docker file true. Now you may be asking yourself, okay, what is this about? What this gives you the ability to do is if you don't have a specific image baked yet that has all of the tooling that you want, then what we can do is define a docker file in our repository along with the Jenkins file. And then when we run the job, the image will be built for us on the fly. So as you can see here in our example repository, I have a Docker file and we're basing it off of node 16 and we are adding in git and curl to this image. So let's go back over to our job and change it to Jenkins file three and watch what happens. So we change this to three, click on save and click on build now. As we go to three, what we see here is a Docker build using the Docker file based on the from of node 16, which we already had local. Then we did an APK add because this is an Alpine based image and we added in git and curl. So we can see that the specific libraries and programs that we need for git and curl are installed for us. And then as we get down into the actual stages, you can see that we have a node version of 16, we have a Git version of 230, and we have a curl version of 777. And then again, at the end, it stops the container and removes the container. So why would you want to use an image that turns into a container as your build agent? As a pipeline author, it gives you the capability to define the tools and specific versions of those tools that you want to use in your pipeline so that those items are not being mandated by others. Secondly, if in your environment, someone else has to install the tools for you on your agent, you can completely bypass all of that because you're able to dynamically bring in the tools that you want at runtime. Finally, it gives you the chance to experiment with different tools without having to make a long-term commitment to those tools. Because if in the previous example, you have a dependency on someone else installing tools for you, that might take a long time. But by running it as a container, you can test it out. If it works great, then maybe you work with somebody else to get static versions of those tools installed, or you just stay with your container-based build agents. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees Devs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on the subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.